Hi everybody, I'm Chad Mullen with Vacuum Interrupters. Today I'm going to take a few minutes to talk to you about timing medium voltage breakers and also atmospheric condition testing as well. So today we're going to be using Vacuum Interrupters breaker timer, the CBT1203, to time our breaker. And first I'm going to hook up our control power plug. So next, we're gonna be hooking up our clamps for our main contacts. The bottom clamps are our commons. They will have no polarity. Doesn't matter how you hook those up. The top, you wanna to go in order from your A, B, and C phase. That's our hookup, ready to turn our test set on and start testing. All right, so we're gonna turn on our timer we're going to set our variac according to our voltage on the nameplate for the control voltage, which is 125 DC, close to. So right now our test set's telling us that our breaker is closed. Our voltage is DC for our secondary. So now all we got to do is send our open command. So we're gonna, our breaker is discharged. We're gonna turn our um, charging motor on. Now we're gonna reset it. Our breaker is in the open position. We'll send a close command. So after running the test, your test set will give you your time in milliseconds. So with those numbers, you can then refer to your breaker manual and they will there have published the data you'll need to compare your results to the manufacturer specs. So some of the things you can find by simply timing the contacts on your breaker is you're gonna be looking at the open and closing speeds of your breaker. So with that information, if it's opening too slow it could be drawing the arc too much and therefore damaging the contacts. You also want it to close within the uh, manufacturer spec time as well. So um, another thing that it could possibly give you is indicate whether the mechanism is getting slow, uh, whether it's just old and worn out or the lubrications are um, just getting gummed up on you. Um, uh, the last thing would be uh, it it will make sure all your phases are closing in at the same time. If you get your phases closing in at different times, what that can do is downstream from your breaker, it will start to, if you have a transformer or a motor, it will try to twist those windings if they're not simultaneously closing together. So we're back to the breaker that we're doing our time test on. So if you're using our CBT1203, we make custom OEM plugs that are compatible with the control voltage cable. So therefore all you have to do is plug this in simply to the contact block on the breaker itself. Along with the VCPW plug, we also have a variety of different plugs compatible with other breakers as well. So now we're gonna talk about another test set from vacuum interrupters, the MAC-TS4. Stands for Magnetron Atmospheric Condition Test Set. So what that does is test the vacuum bottle for the amount of pressure buildup inside of it. Therefore, you can use that data to trend and predict failure in the vacuum bottle, unlike the AC high pot, which only gives you a pass or fail result, and that's all the information you have from that. So the first method of testing with our MAC TS4 is going to be our flex coil, which is wrapped directly around the vacuum bottle. First. You're going to have to insulate the bottle from the coil with our Nomex paper. I'll explain further on that in just a little bit. So when we're wrapping our coil, what you'll want to do is take the small clamp through first. And you're only going to pull out all your slack. to where the bigger clamp hangs right there. Then after that, you want five laps around, nice and tight. Okay, so after we have our five wraps around the bottle, 
We're going to use a ratchet clamp. We'll tighten it up a little bit more. So we have one, two, three, four, five wraps. And we're going to connect our coil. And also make sure your five wraps are also centered where your contacts are inside of your vacuum bottle. Now that our leads are hooked up, we're going to power on our test set. So this is our scroll wheel that we'll do all our selecting and navigating through the test set. We have save data, time settings, and a PC connection if you want to use the interface with your computer. So we'll go into our VI test. So as you can see, we have different curve selections and all these curves are based on the diameter of the bottle around the contacts. So we will pick our curve according to our breaker we're running the test on, which will be a curve two, four to five inches. Now all we're gonna do is run and make sure everything is connected correctly and hit OK. Now we're running a test. So the first test you see right here, it's checking your overall leakage current with the initial high pot test, which is 0.2 microamps. And what we're gonna do is subtract that from our final results when we add our magnetic field to the bottle. So our numbers that we got here are very good readings, negative seven amps. So this is our ion current. This is a number that we're actually measuring. Down here is our negative five PA. That is a calculated reading with our measurement for our ion current, our known, known high voltage, and then our known magnetic field strength. So now that we have our results, we can use those results uh, that we've received from the test set in the form of pressure. We can reference that to our pressure chart to see where your vacuum bottle is in its lifetime. So now that we talked about one method of testing with our Mac TS4, we're gonna talk about another way to test with it. This is our rigid coil test method. This is a power vac breaker. This coil is power vac specific, but we also have rigid coils that are compatible with breakers that have a clearance all the way around the pole assembly. So with this larger coil, and the uh, larger amount of airspace between the vacuum bottle and the coil, you have to add more of a charge. So what we're doing is adding this capacitor box that piggybacks onto our main test set to give you more of a charge during your test. So the great thing about the rigid coil is it makes it considerably easier to set up for testing. All you have to do is simply place the rigid coil over the pole assembly and it falls directly where you need it to for the vacuum bottle. I'm gonna talk about a couple more things in reference to our Mac TS4 testing. So what we have here is our final method of testing. This is called our fixed coil. Most of the time this is used with breaker shops that have to take out small bottles and contactors and or things along that sort. Uh, along this size, <coughs> that when it's no longer efficient to test it in the field, what, how this works is you drop the bottle inside that coil and then the natural resting position of a vacuum bottle is closed. So what you'll need to do is open it during test. So we have jigs available to open the bottle while you apply your magnetic field and high voltage to that. The second thing would be going back to insulating the vacuum bottle while you're using the flex coil. So the reason we use this Nomex paper is because inside every vacuum bottle, you have a series of metal shields that go down the bottle. If you'll notice this gap right here, it's very small. If you have bad insulation inside of your vacuum bottle and apply our 25 kV DC to the bottle, it can jump this gap, energize the ring around the bottle and damage your test set through the low voltage coil. Again, I'm Chad Mullen with Vacuum Interrupters. If you'd like more scientific information uh, concerning our Mac TS4, you can find that on our website, vacuuminterrupters.com, or even more information on our timer as well. 
Thank you for watching.